Reviewing the menu of Dr. Stravinsky right here in Barcelona. Dr. Stravinsky is currently ranked 25th of the world's 50 best bars. It is the brainchild of Antonio Naranjo Navares, a Cuban bartender, alumni of Hemcock, uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know who Dr. Stavinsky is himself, and the whole place just looks very, very much like a laboratory. Regardless, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. first impressions. Front cover, it's a white piece of paper. It's got a very nice texture to it. It says, Destilados de Laboratorio. So it goes with the theme, and there's a picture of an old dude. There you go. First page. All right, it's all in Spanish. Okay, they are very craft, in a nutshell. The second third spread is essentially a flavor map. Different flavors, different sensations are the planets, and all the drinks are somewhere between those planets orbiting flavor. I like the approach, it's on point, laboratorical, astronomical, science baby, science bitch! Next page, redistilled, a rotovapor and a bain marie. Okay, I, it looks like they have sections and the sections are based on techniques used. No one knows what a bain marie or a redistillate or rotovapor is, but hey, you're dropping them industry bombs. Everyone's gonna know you got a big dick now because you got a rota vapor and a bean marine. Dry martini of the earth. Kettle one distilled with earth. Ugh. With earth? With mud? With ground? Truffle martini. The first section, I'm not gonna lie, is intimidating. Two types of martinis truffle, earth. Talk about coming in strong. It is what it is. Temperature infusions. Just one drink. Fermentation. That old buzzword that everyone loves. Everyone thinks they know what they're talking about, but most people don't. Unrelated side note, I believe Himcock has the best fermentation program globally. And Antonio is an alumnus of Himcock. One would assume that fermentation he's very good at. Smoked corneal of honey and ginger, lapsang, kombucha. Jesus. This menu reads like the bartender's wet dream. <laughs> Fat wash. Salmon dry martini. I cannot think of anything I want to put less in my mouth. Milk wash. Cool. Well, there you go. It's all about techniques, which is which is cool. And uh, the last page is non-alcoholics and uh, a little flex. They have a page of all of their achievements. You want everything. That was first impressions. Uh, let's move on to practical. So let's get some basics out of the way. The menu has 18 pages. It has 24 cocktails, four of which are non-alcoholics. The whole thing is broken down to nine sections completely based on techniques. Techniques used in the bar and cooking world to produce flavor. A5 in size, 80 grams in weight, and that's about it, guys. Very minimalistic and very, very clean. Let's bang out them pros and cons! Now welcome to the pro section. Pro number one is the flavor map. I am a big fan of these and it is very well executed. Instead of providing the same old four flavor bullshit of salt, sweet, sour, and savory, they went for this idea of a lot more orbiting planets. And I think it works well. Pro number two. The whole thing is very minimalistic. There's not a lot of extra bells and whistles, just a very basic white piece of paper, explanation of the technique, and then the drink layout, and then we move on. No nonsense. Pro number three is the actual drink layout. We have the name, we have the ingredients, we have the price, and then we have these little flavor descriptors. Nevertheless, there's always, always, always cons. Con number one is actually the menu layout. I'm talking about which sections are where and what drinks are listed at certain moments. The big one is the fact that the first three drinks that people are going to choose from, two of which are dry martinis. So this is a pretty hardcore start. Con number two is the menu itself. There is no binder between the pages, which means if I do this, it falls apart. Let's move on to visual. Sticking true to its concept of sort of minimalistic approach, the visual section is just as minimalistic as the drink's descriptions. We've got the picture of an unknown man at the front. We assume that is Dr. Stravinsky. Then turning to the second page, we have our cosmic spread. I guess this is the biggest visual element of the entire menu. And you've got a bunch of illustrations in all the sections. The best way to describe their visual style is sort of 
subtle. Let's move on to pros and cons. So pros and specifically pro number one. And that's actually the menu color. Dr. Stravinsky does get very dark, so you need something that's gonna stand out in the ambient light. You can read it. What a great start. Number two, all the visuals are very much thematic to the name of the bar. Laboratory medical style sketches throughout match a lot the overall overreaching concept. But then there's always cons. Con number one is actually the font size and the font style. The font is tiny and although you can read it, it, I have to strain my eyes in order to read some of the details. Con number two, it's actually the type of illustrations that they've used. Yes, they match the concept, but my God, does it read like a biology, chemistry, physics textbook that I was reading at the age of 10. I understand what they were trying to do. It's just, I think it could have been done a little bit more fun. Overall, that's it for the visual section. Everything else is pretty on point. So the crucial element, conceptual. I'll be honest with you guys. This menu, it looks like a journal from a professor in a laboratory. And that's exactly how the place looks. It is what it is. It's a thematic ride. Regardless, there is some pros and cons to the concept. And pro number one is that the menu is genuinely, at the start, quite mysterious. Let me explain. It's kind of cool. It's kind of nerdy. You've got the cosmos. You've got this laboratory. You feel like a kid sneaking into some old dude's house who's got monkey brains and shit inside. And you're like, ooh, this is cool. And that's a cool feeling that is quickly gone because it moves me straight onto cons. And con number one, instead of discovering monkey brains, you have a learning curve of learning what the hell redistillation, bottle fermentation or and that is the opposite of what cool is. And that is it really for the pros and cons because there's not much to criticize about the concept of the menu versus the concept of the bar because it nails it. But that moves me on to us, I guess, judging the concept from afar. And here's where it gets spicy. Dr. Stravinsky feels like the difference between watching a Hollywood or television version of something from real life the professors on TV or on Hollywood have always really cool with the cool office and dead animals and talking fish and book of the dead or whatever. But in real life, of course, we understand that they spend five minutes desanitizing their hands because they could end the world with a biovirus. Coronavirus jokes. In the end, it's up to you. Do you want to feel like going into a laboratory of a television show? Or do you want to go hang out at a science lab with gloves and vests and safety goggles? As a closing statement, I guess it's always up to you. Do you want to read a biology textbook or would you like to see the film Jumanji? Personally, I prefer Jumanji. Now let's see if the guys will let me back into their bar or will I be killed, fermented and bottled as kombucha.